20 YouTubers. 9-9. One competition. We gathered YouTube personalities from across the U.S. to compete in our biggest field test ever during Blade Show 2013 in Atlanta. Here's how the competition works. There are two rounds with three people in each round. A That's panel it. of Watch judges it. uses a rubric oh, to determine man. who will move on to the final round. Bottle. Chance of survival to five. Each participant can use up to three personal survival items and the knife oh, yeah. that Blade HQ provides. I'm, 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 I'm You'll new have here. 20 minutes to make preparations to survive the following scenario. A large storm levels your town. Fires, looting, and chaos force you to leave home and hunker down for a few days until authorities re-establish order. We're gonna bug out into the woods. This is where you ended up. We got mini cold steel tough light. You guys ready for this? <laughs> you have 20 minutes to use it. Two people will get eliminated. One will move on to the next round. Then the shelter. I don't really have a strategy yet. Round one, on your mark, get set, what are we go. Doing? 20 minutes. I'm thinking that would make a little good shelter right in that little indent right there. Gavco begins the round by starting a fire with his lighter. I had that lighter, good lighter to begin with. I didn't have to use fire or nothing, so it was pretty easy. He might lose creativity points, but his method is effective. I mean, the skill use is known to bring a lighter, so I think he's doing pretty good with skill use. Brian is constructing a bow drill. He has tried the technique before, but he has never been successful. The clock is ticking and Gavco isn't wasting any time. His knife is seeing good use, and his survival items are helping his camp take shape. I like this one, actually. I have two of them myself, nice. but not the full color. It will get the job done. I'm gonna do something super simple. Uh, Give us some be my third. My third survival. Michael sneak it to me. <laughs> oh, we're threading. <laughs> Try and find another stick to put on top. So I'm going to attempt to use this, but. Brian's ingenuity may be enough to get him creativity points, but will he be able to get the survival points he needs to advance to the winner's round? There are eight minutes remaining in the first round, and Archer is just starting to use his blast match for his fire. Do what? I'd probably be dead by now. In the final five minutes, Brian has no shelter and no fire. Game over. <laughs> but a lighter magically oh, yeah. appears, and he goes Dude, for it. Snag the lighter. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Snag the lighter. Archer's blast match has come through. He is fighting to keep his fire alive with minutes left on the clock. I want to find a stick to make a spear out of. Water in a plastic bottle, you can do that. Just leave the cup open so it doesn't explode. Put it on the side of the fire. His uh, idea about boiling the water in a, in a plastic thing, he's got to keep that very high. A uh, real, real high off of it, because as you can see right now, the bottle's starting to melt. I we saw a chipmunk, chipmunk here on the way here. Fear for if I ever see a fish here or like a chickmung chick we seen. In the final seconds, Brian has abandoned his bow drill in favor of scavenging in the river. He finds a bag, but he's out of time to open it and see if there are supplies inside. Time's up! 20 minutes are over and the decision rests with the judges. They have complete control over who moves on to the next round. Gavco a difficulty of skills used? Zero, because he had a lighter. But based on creativity alone, we went with Brian. Just because he made a bow, he was using the lanyard hole, the knife. And, and, and more trying to do a bow drill when everybody's watching is really, really, really hard. He did start making a fire in the middle of a river, though. And he found a backpack full of camping That's supplies. That's right, he started foraging. Potential camping supplies. 12, 16, 13. 13, 14, 12. Even though Brian didn't get his fire started, he ended up winning. It actually held up pretty good. I used it as a uh, spot the bow drill, and uh, it's got some marks in there, but nothing bad. Despite his failed attempts, Brian's creativity and the judge's decisions send him to the winner's round. Round two is the exact same as round one. Wait, three items plus the knife. To get prepared to make fire. That would have been my shelter. The round begins, and Tactadude goes for a different approach. I saw tablets. 
My secret is be prepared or pry this out. I'm forging for whatever I can. Finding screen, extra water bottles. I mean, I ain't gonna drink that, but if I find some fresh water, mm -hmm. something to store it in. He's looking at that shelter that's either right there or up top. Pacta dude heads up the opposite bank toward higher ground, and the one-man film crew bids him farewell. I'm gonna start making some stuff for to get prepared to make fire. I'm not gonna necessarily make fire because I don't have a lighter, but I, who knows what I'll find. I'm just gonna make a start of a bow so I can get some stuff prepared. It's sharp enough to do the job, but it's a little small, but it's not bad. I mean, if that's all you have, you can definitely make it work. Water purification. That's a, a cup of whiskey there, is it? No, no, it's not. It's not whiskey. Not whiskey. James wastes no time starting a fire with his lighter, and he has big plans to use his line to catch fish in the river. On the other side of the river, Cacta Dude is also getting ready to start a fire. I'm attempting a fire, but it's with a uh, some some kind of flexible vine. I've only seen this done on TV. I've never tried it. So. All right, little guy right here. Sharp. Now I'm just oh. gonna make this little spear. If I do see some fish or look for some earlier, at least I'll be prepared. I'm trying to get this fishing line untangled, and then I need to make a some sort of hook. Got the pink mini tough light. Other than the fact it's pink, it's pretty good. <laughs> I think my sister would sure like it. So more minutes left. And what you find when you're cleaning house. Ramon magically finds a lighter, and he's just getting a fire started in the final minutes of the round. It's got a lot of control. The grip's great, and it is sharp. So it worked good. Cacta Dude lost his lighter somewhere in the wild jungle, but a titanium P lighter magically appears to help him out. Using the sock as hot pad method, he is hoping to start a fire with some green grass. If it was a Bic versus this style of lighter, you'd still be in trouble because it'd be hot because you keep holding on to it. On the other side of the river, James is trying out his new fishing pole and his homegrown hook. It needs a weight on it and it needs, could use some improvement, but for only 20 minutes, it's not that bad. If this is a, a tornado situation and normally that comes with rain and stuff, why is everybody right next to a river? Because it's probably going to flood or is flooding. There's a guy over there, he looks like he's chilling with the 40, but is that glass? not nearly as flammable as plastic and if he actually puts a whole bunch of um, sticks around it and keeps the water level higher than the sticks itself the uh, glass won't break. Time's up! The second round of 20 minutes is over and it's up to the judges to decide who will face Brian in the winner's bracket. I don't think Cannon would have made it. He's a little past permanent injury. He didn't even have shelter, he didn't have a fire, he didn't have water. A lot of this survival stuff and all that, it's a lot of creativity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 17. James, I got 11. 11 and then 8 for Cannon. The scores are in and it will be Ramon and Brian going head to head in the winner's round. Steel? I met Lynn yesterday, one of the coolest people I ever met. In fact, show us that picture, Jeff, while we're thinking about it. It was, it was the greatest moment of my life. He, he handed me the uh, the Raja there and he pulled out his uh, Expada and just grabbed me and was like, let's take a picture. <laughs> Hell yeah. It was awesome. Yep. Framing that one put it on my wall. Final round will be 20 minutes long with the judges' decision based on the participants' ability to create items for comfort in the wild. We've got Brian, we've got Ramon, and the way it's going to go down is like this. We're going to give them a cold steel, code four, and they can't make a fire, but they have to make other survival-related materials. That can be cookware, that can be things for comfort, anything like that. So we got these two, one code four each, in 20 minutes. The winner gets a $25 Blade HQ gift certificate. Round two, let's do it. What this is forcing them to do is get really creative. And as a human species, we didn't get to where we are today by just gnawing on bones and stuff. We had tools and got creative with the use of the tools. So we get a little bit back to our ancestral roots here. We're not just opening up cardboard boxes or carving fuzz sticks and really, really force some knife use, some knife skill, knife craft in there. On that, huh? Yep. 
Ramon is working on making hand tools while Brian is foraging for materials in the river again. I'm building shelter right here. I don't know if I want to spend my whole 20 minutes building a cover for it, but maybe I'll go cut some leafy branches down. Now I'm just collecting trash. Ramon is trying to peel the bark off the tree to make cordage. No, that ain't gonna work. Maybe we'll get some, maybe a fishing line out of it or something. Brian is trying to make fish hooks out of a rusty can. He's putting survival points on the line with the very real possibility of dying a slow and painful death from tetanus. I'll figure something out here. We'll make it nice and sharp. Meanwhile, Ramon is also busy using the garbage he has gathered. I'm gonna make a scooper and a spoon. And like I said, I don't really care for the serrations and it's binding up there. Not binding up, but stopping. Does he have the skills to avoid cutting his hands and win over the judges with his tools? Two minutes! Two minutes, fellas! Trying to make a fish hook out of multiple things that just keep breaking because it's all rusty. Ramon is still gathering garbage in his push to the finish line. Crawdad trap. I got a collection of rusty fish hooks. I got a tourniquet. I got some strapping and then I made this spear out of some zip ties that I found. The time is up and now it's all on the judges to decide whether Ramon's axe and spoon from That's Brian's recovery. hooks and spear. The first thing he did was made a hatchet. Yeah, so I would say and difficulty it, of skills used. It was, a, it was a pretty effective hatchet. You see that? Yeah. The hatchet's not no. easy to make. Brian is zero because he didn't look very comfortable. Okay. The activity I gave uh, Ramona five and Brian a four, so four, yep. I, I ended up with fourteen and twenty. Yeah. So I say Ramon just by a hair. Yeah. yeah I had I had Ramon nineteen and yeah. Brian sixteen. And it's Ramon. <laughs> he wins a twenty-five dollar Blade <laughs> HQ yeah, gift certificate and all the fame, stardom, and glory that YouTube has to offer. I didn't like the serrations at all, and I'm not a fan of serrations, so yeah. that's probably lends to why I didn't like it so much. It just every time I went to cut and hit it, it stopped. The edge seemed to hold up a little bit. I was overall? I was beating it up. I was torquing on it, and it did. When I was torquing on it, good. It it held up to that because I was twisting it pretty good. Any blade play? Yeah, there's a well, little bit lateral, not this way. The grip's great. I like the grip. It doesn't. It don't move. It stays. Fits my hand well. For bushcrafting and being out here in the wilderness, maybe something with a little more grip. The serrations were nice for out here in the wilderness. I'm not a big serration guy. Got a little bit of a bite mark on that middle serration from trying to carve a barb into a piece of metal from a fish hook. Other than that, not, not much. I mean, this thing held up pretty nice. Feels nice to hold. Feels solid. So, I like it. Give it a eight out of 10, I'd say. And this little guy is just awesome. I mean, they had nothing, nothing good, nothing but good stuff to say about this one. I like it. Came in real handy on the first, uh, first challenge. I do like. I bought a couple of these myself. I have so this. I think third one. I gave one away, but I, I like this one. You open this anywhere, nobody cares. And uh, for how small it is, and the, the way that they did the handle, you can put a lot of force into the cut. So if you need to cut some really nasty stuff, and it's so cheap that even if something happens, you don't care. You just buy a new one. Hey fellas, thanks for watching. Huge thank you to everyone who showed up for this little competition. I had a ton of fun. You guys have fun? Yeah. Tons of fun. Guys, thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe to these people's channels. I'm going to leave their channels in the description box so you can go and subscribe. Tons of great content. Honestly, like this group is producing amazing stuff. So be sure to subscribe to theirs and buy your blades at bladehq.com. Thanks guys. We'll have another video next Wednesday. Don't yourself. Okay. <laughs> I just got this text from uh, Jay Davis. Dude, I'm so sorry. I slept through my alarm. <laughs> and uh, Chris from Nice Thursday gave me this heart-shaped rock for when I'm dying. This will be the last thing I'll hold in my hand to remember this awesome trip, my first blade show.